Welcome to Holly Sniper EFI Training Part 27. In this training module, we're going to explore setting up and working with our boost control tuning function found on our Super Sniper and XFlow Sniper systems. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with programming our boost control tuning feature found within our Holly Sniper EFI systems. Now, our boost control tuning feature requires us to have a higher tiered sniper box. So it needs to have a Super Sniper or an XFlow that has more inputs and outputs. The base sniper system won't have enough input outputs to utilize the boost control tuning feature. So if you do have a base sniper, this video will not be applicable for your application. However, if we do have a Super Sniper or an XFlow box with all the proper inputs and outputs, we can utilize the boost control feature on a turbocharged engine to increase the boost pressure past whatever your wastegate spring level is going to be. So if you have a 5 PSI wastegate spring installed on the wastegate, you should hold mechanically right around 4 to 5 pounds of boost. We can increase that and typically more than double the spring pressure utilizing the boost control routine with a boost control solenoid. This tutorial, we're going to take a look at setting up everything mechanically within the vacuum routing and making sure the wiring is proper for our boost control so that when we're programming it virtually, it's going to do exactly what we want. We're also going to be covering some of the programming details as well as going over the closed loop PID based tuning so that we have the response and control right when we're trying to go after the target pressure. We'll talk about what that all means here in just a little bit. Let's jump in here and take a look at turning on our boost control feature here, and then we'll talk about the programming configurations and details as we go through the tutorial. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is jump up into the toolbox right here and go into enable boost. Under enable boost, we're gonna go here and just click yes. We do wanna choose the, uh, the boost config, and then we'll use the default blank dot boost config file. This is gonna bring in our boost ICF here up at the top and allows us to access all of the programming for our boost control routine. Now, let's go through this real quick. What we're gonna do is just talk about our system setup here, and then as we're talking about this, it's gonna lead us into the solenoids and some of the wiring details. We'll talk about the routing and the wiring associated to either a dual or a single boost control solenoid routine. We'll also talk about the role of a wastegate and what it does in terms of the, uh, the turbocharged system, and then what we're doing by controlling the boost with a boost control solenoid and make a little bit more sense as to what we're actually accomplishing. So first thing first, we're gonna find our wastegate type. We're gonna find that we should be using an external wastegate with dual ports. We have a top port and a bottom port. The bottom port will be referencing our compressor discharge or boost pressure reference. That's what allows it to hold at the rate spring pressure. The top port is used for actual control as we're gonna find here in this tutorial. So the wastegate type cannot be changed from dual port dome pressure control. Now under the solenoid configuration, we have a couple options. There's a Holly solenoid, a Humphrey solenoid. These are both three ports. This would be a single solenoid. Then we have a dual Holly or a dual Humphrey. The dual option here is used if you're running uh, CO2 based boost control where you're feeding the actual solenoids, uh, the CO2 pressure from a tank. This is definitely not my preferred way for the boost control simply because you have to carry around a tank with CO2. If you run out of CO2, well then your boost control is not going to work. If we base it on manifold pressure, coming from our actual compressor cover, uh, the boost pressure source, using a single solenoid, which is what I'm gonna be heavily covering here in this tutorial, this is a better option for streetcars. And primarily if you're dealing with a sniper system and you're putting it on a carburetor retrofit, you're likely just to be doing a street application. You're not going into full-blown race application and uh, wanting to use CO2-based boost control. So um, we have these options in here in terms of the solenoid configuration. Now it is important that we select the correct solenoid that we're dealing with here because it goes in, in the background and selects the correct uh, dead time or latency for the boost control solenoid that we're dealing with. So there is a certain response or characteristic based on the solenoid that we're dealing with and the Humphrey or the Holly here are going to be different in terms of that response. The Holly solenoid is essentially the same thing as a Mac three port solenoid, which are very common on the aftermarket. Uh, the Humphrey is a little bit more distinctive in terms of that solenoid and that is something that um, you'd have to run a Humphrey style solenoid. Typically we'll be using this, the single Holly three port, so I'll just go ahead and select this option. Now the control method, we only have one option here as dome pressure control. Now the dome pressure in terms of the control method is going to require us to wire in a pressure sensor that's going to measure the dome pressure 
at the actual wastegate hat. It wants to know what the pressure is inside that hat to be able to drive the control response. Now the dome pressure doesn't necessarily line up with the actual manifold pressure, meaning we could have more dome pressure required to hit the same boost pressure. So for example, if I want to go after 15 pounds of boost, I might need 20 or 25 pounds of dome pressure. There's a little bit of disconnect there in terms of the programming, so it's not my preferred way to control boost. I'd rather see it based on manifold pressure, but this is the way that Holly has written the software. So we're uh, kind of stuck with the dome pressure only. So the dome pressure option requires a dome pressure sensor to measure the dome pressure in the top port of our wastegate. The operating mode, we have a boost versus time or boost versus RPM. Now boost versus time is better suited for a drag application. Boost versus RPM is better suited for a street application. So you can choose either here. I'm going to leave it on boost versus time. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.